to the celebration of life of uh, Katie Pankratz. And I would like to uh, welcome all of you this morning in one way or another. We have been connected to Katie over the years, uh, some of us more than others, and uh, this is a, a time in which we would like to say the, the last goodbye. I would like to greet each one of us uh, with uh, two scripture passages. One is found in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 3 where it says, Grace and peace to you from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, when we talk about grace and peace in scripture, it's a lot more than just a greeting. It is uh, a profound, uh, it has a profound significance uh, when people reach the grace of Jesus and the peace that is, offers, is offered to us. And the second passage is also from um, the same chapter, verses 8 and 9, where it says, He, and it's talked about Jesus here, <clears throat> He, Jesus Christ, will also keep you firm to the end, so that you will be blameless on the day of our Lord Jesus Christ. And God is faithful, who has called you into fellowship with his Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. And this applies significantly to, to Katie. Um, it's a promise that we find in Scripture if we devote our life to God. If you have experienced <clears throat> the redemption, the forgiveness of sins, then he will make us blameless. Not that we can be perfect or without sin, but uh, through Jesus itself, God is faithful, and he will complete it, and he will give us this fellowship in a greater measure even than we have experienced here. And today, we are celebrating Katie in this fellowship with the Son of God, Jesus Christ, her Lord. I would like also to uh, give the welcome for those that do not understand uh, the English language, so we will kind of going back and forth today. We have uh, also this service being live streamed. Uh, uh, people in Germany are watching and in other places here in Canada as well. So let me greet them as well. So ich möchte euch ganz herzlich willkommen heißen, besonders ihr, die äh, mit uns seid durch den Livestream heute Morgen. Und wir möchten euch äh, mit zwei ähm, Schriftstellen begrüßen heute Morgen. Eine kommt aus 1. Korinther 1, Vers 3, wo es sagt, Gnade sei mit euch und Friede von Gott, unserem Vater und dem Herrn Jesus Christus. Und die zweite Schriftstelle von demselben Kapitel, Verse 8 und 9, da sagt es, der wird euch auch fest erhalten, das meint Jesus Christus, bis ans Ende, dass ihr untadelig seid am Tag unseres Herrn Jesus Christus. Denn Gott ist treu, durch den ihr berufen seid zur Gemeinschaft seines Sohnes Jesus Christus, unserem Herrn. So, wir möchten euch mit diesen Worten ganz herzlich willkommen heißen. Äh, auch wenn wir weit entfernt sind, so möchtet ihr euch fühlen, als wäret ihr zugegen, auch heute Morgen hier in dieser Trauerfeier für Katie Pankratz. I would like to pray with us, uh, and if you don't mind, I would ask you to stand. Father, we thank you for your peace. And we read in your word, Father, it is a peace that surpasses all understanding. And we know that this peace <clears throat> only the Holy Spirit can bring to our hearts. And we know it's a testimony of your presence in us if we know you personally like Katie did. Father, we also thank you that through Jesus Christ, your Son, you have promised to be with us until the end, as we just read in your word and presenting us blameless before you. Father, we cannot totally understand, but we know from your word, Father, that uh, we experience already like this blameless life through the redemption to Jesus. And so today we are thankful, Father, that we can celebrate the life of Katie Pomper, that we can remember her, that we can remember that you saved her, 
and that you have received her into glory today. Father, we thank you also that we can gather here and that we can pay our respects and that we can <clears throat> look back into her life and life of her family and learn, Father, from your faithfulness to her. So we pray, Father, that this would be a moment of reflection, a moment of understanding life, Father, that we <clears throat> sometimes only can understand when we are faced with death. So be with us and grant us your peace. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated. <clears throat> if you look back into the life of uh, the Pankratz family, we have seen that God has led them in amazing ways, all the way from Ukraine to Canada. And uh, you will hear a little bit more about uh, her story as well. As I was looking back into some of the wishes that uh, Katie had, and it was interesting that Katie was kind of the catalyst of the three sisters, right? And uh, when we had the, the funerals for, for Lisa and for Anna, she was the one that picked the songs. And um, today we're kind of going to repeat some of those songs because it has a reason, because those were also her favorite songs. And uh, the first one is a testimony of uh, what God has done in their life. Um, it's a well, very well-known song among Christians. It's called, All the Way My Savior Leads Me. So we have a worship team today, and uh, so we're thankful for you that you have been joining, joining us today. And if you know this song, please uh, sing along as a testimony to what God did in the life of uh, Katie. So please, worship team.
If you look into the life story of Katie, uh, what I will be reading is, uh, is very incomplete. Uh, I would just like to let you know also, we will have like a time of, uh, of sharing tributes today, so it's open. And uh, I hope that we will fill in those blanks. And I know that uh, there is many other parts of uh, their lives that uh, <clears throat> will not be told today because it was a long life. And uh, God granted her many, many years. So Katie Pankratz was born in December 14, 1925 in Franztal, Molochna, Ukraine. Her parents were Peter and Anna Pankratz, nay harder. After World War II ended, the family fled Russia and went first to Holland and then immigrated to Canada in 1947. The family worked hard and repaid their travel debt as it was custom for many, many immigrants at that time. So Katie was baptized and received into the Yarrow MB Church in July 25th, 1948. Um, was the settlement for many of the Mennonites here in the Lower Mainland. With better earning possibilities in Vancouver, they moved to that area and worked and fellowshiped there. In May, in 7th of May, 1967, uh, Katie joined King Road and Butte Church, and she remained a member here in our church until her passing. Katie and the sisters Anna and Lisa had a burden to send Bibles to Russia. However, this was not permitted by the communist government. And in 1962, a group of people who shared that vision recruited them into their work. And so they decided to purchase tins of canned chicken, which they emptied, and into which they packed Russian Bibles. And then they resealed the tins and sent them to people in Russia to the addresses that they had in Siberia, Kazakhstan, and in Alma-Ata. In 1988, the group involved with this project organized as the Voice of Hope mission, with Walter Penner as chairman and board members, including Pastor Fogel, Bruno Miller, and a pastor of a Baptist church here in Abbotsford. So they collected good used clothing, bailed them, and sent containers with clothing and soap to Russia. When it was no longer permitted, they obtained 2,000 Russian Bibles that were printed in Israel and sent them through Germany to Russia. And recipients got a Bible for themselves and then distributed the remainder to others. Another project was a solar-powered radio that uh, had a Bible, New Testament, and sermons program into them. <clears throat> so probably the ultimate project was sponsoring missionaries in Russia. The monthly support for missionary families varied, but may have averaged around $400, $450 per month. And at first they had 60 missionaries, but as an older sponsor passed on, the number was reduced to 40. After the passing of Anna, Voice of Hope Mission transferred the leadership to a group in Winkler, Manitoba, to take the leadership of this missionary venture. So Katie Pankertz went to be with the Lord on August 8, 2022, in Surrey, B.C. God granted Katie Pankertz 96 years, 8 months, and 25 days on earth before taking her into eternity. Katie Pankertz wurde am 14. Dezember 1925 in Franztal, Molochna, Ukraine, geboren. Und ihre Eltern waren Peter und Anna Pankratz, geborene Harde. Nach Ende des Zweiten Weltkrieges floh die Familie aus Russland und ging zunächst nach Holland und wanderte dann in 1947 nach Kanada aus. Die Familie arbeitete hart und zahlte ihre Reiseschulden zurück. Kede wurde am 25. Juli 1948 getauft, in die Jero mb gemeinde aufgenommen und da verschiedene Verdienstmöglichkeiten besser waren in Vancouver, zogen sie in dieser Gegend, arbeiteten und schlossen sich dort der Gemeinschaft an. Am 7. Mai in 1967 trat Katie der King Road Gemeinde bei und blieb bis zu ihrem Tod Mitglied. 
Katie und die Schwestern Anna und Lisa hatten die Last, Bibeln nach Russland zu schicken. Und dies wurde jedoch von der kommunistischen Regierung nicht erlaubt. Und in 1962 rekrutierte eine Gruppe, die diese Vision teilten, sie für ihre Arbeit. Sie entschieden sich für den Kauf von Hähnchenkonserven in Dosen, die sie leerten und äh, die sie russische Bibeln einpackten. Die Dosen wurden dann wieder versiegelt und äh, sie an Menschen in Russland, an Adressen in Sibirien, Kasachstan und Almaty verschickt. In 1988 organisierte äh, sich diese Gruppe in äh, ein Projekt und sie nannten sich The Voice of Hope Mission. Mit Walter Penner als Vorsitzender und Vorstandsmitglieder, darunter Pastor Vogel, Bruno Müller und Pastor einer Baptistengemeinde hier in Abelsfurt. Sie sammelten gute gebrauchte Kleidung, bauten sie und schickten Container mit Kleidung und Seife nach Russland. Als das nicht mehr erlaubt war, besorgten sie sich 2000 russische Bibeln, die in Israel gedruckt wurden und schickten sie durch Deutschland nach Russland. Die Empfänger bekamen eine Bibel für sich selbst und verteilten dann den Rest an andere. Ein weiteres Projekt war solarbetriebene Radios, die die Bibel, das Neue Testament und Predigten einprogrammiert waren. Das wohl ultimative Projekt war die Partnerschaft Patenschaft für Missionare in Russland. Die monatliche Unterstützung für Missionsfamilien variierte lag, aber unter dem Durchschnitt bei so 400 oder 450 Dollar pro Monat. Anfangs hatten sie 60 Missionare, aber als ältere Sponsoren gingen, wurde die Zahl auf 40 reduziert. Nach dem Tod von Anna übertrug Voice of Hope Mission die Leitung an eine Gruppe in Winkler, Manitoba, um die Leitung dieses missionarischen Unterfangens zu übernehmen. Kitty Pankratz wurde am 8. August 2022 in Surrey von ihren Herren heimgerufen. Und Gott schenkte Kitty Pankratz 96 Jahre, 8 Monate und 25 Tage auf dieser Erde, bevor er sie in die Ewigkeit nahm. So this is certainly like an incomplete, I said, life story, and I hope that you can fill in some of the blanks and um, we hear more. And I hope it's accurate what, the, what this life story says as well. Before we hear the tributes, um, I would like to have us join together in singing the next song. It's a German song that she loved. Man weiß nicht die Stunde. We don't know the time when God is calling us. And uh, Katie did not know what time, when God would call her, but now she is in the presence of the Lord. So if you know the song, please sing along. <clears throat> Der Meister wird kommen, 
would like to give now opportunity for people to share you know, some of the experiences. I would like to invite Annie Isaac to come up first. Uh, I talked to her and she has quite a bit of involvement through her mom as well. So would you like to share some of your experience with her, please? I got some information about Kathy Pankratz from my mother. They were friends. And I want to share this on behalf of my mom because she cannot be here today. Uh, Kathy Pankratz moved from Franztal to Paulsheim in her, uh, in her early years, and that's where my mom lived too. They lived in the same village there. And both of their fathers were taken away by the Russians during World War II, and they never, the family never saw them again. Their mothers, uh, Kathy Pankratz's mother and my mother, with their children, fled the Russian army to Germany on horse carriages. Overcoming all the terror and difficulties while on the run, both of them, my mother and Kathy's family, ended up in the same village in Germany named Klein Eichlingen, where they found shelter at different households in that community. My mother and Kathy both found work at some farmers in that village just across the street from each other. There was a lady in Klein Eichlingen. She was a deacon, and everybody called her Schwester Marta. Uh, this lady looked after the refugees in the village, invited them to church, to Bible studies, and prayer meetings, and led a number of them to the Lord. There my mother accepted the Lord, and my mom was convinced that Kathy had done the same. At one point, the village had an evangelistic meeting there where my mom and Kathy participated as well. After the last meeting, when the two of them went home, Kathy told my mom, I wish I would have stayed behind to talk to the evangelist and to accept Jesus as my Lord and Savior as well. My mom was surprised and told Kathy, I thought you had done this already. No, I haven't, was Kathy's response. Then my mom encouraged her to turn around and go back. That's what, what the two of them did, and Kathy talked to the evangelist and gave her life over to Jesus. After that, her heart was filled with joy. She never turned back. After the Russians tried to get the refugees from Germany to send them back to Russia into labor camps, they fled to the Netherlands. After a year in the Netherlands, my mom's and Kathy's ways separated. My mother's family went to Paraguay, and Kathy, with her mother and two sisters, went to Canada. Kathy's mother had a sister in Canada with an additional little house on her property where Kathy's family found shelter. They worked hard and lived frugal. Eventually, they could afford their own house and later on some more. They had a big heart for missions work, so they became part of Voice of Hope ministry where Kathy was very much involved in and brought many sacrifices to keep the mission going. After Kathy was the last surviving member of her family, she donated a whole house to missions, to MCC, I think it was. She died on August 8th, and her funeral is on the 8th as well. Eight is the number of new beginning. She is resting in Jesus' arms now, united with her loved ones. They were waiting for her as the last one to join them. Rest in peace, Kathy. You finished the race. Ja, Schwester Annie Isaac hat eben uns erzählt von der Erfahrung von ihrer Mutter zusammen mit Katie. Um, in Deutschland und in Holland und dann auch hier in Kanada. Und ganz besonders hat sie erzählt, wie Katie dem Herrn gefunden hat in einer Evangelisation, äh, zur selben Zeit ungefähr auch, wo ihre Mutter es äh, getan hat. Katie, sie waren schon am Weg nach Hause und dann hat Katie dieses, äh, diesen Wunsch erklärt, dass sie doch gerne wollte auch zurückgeblieben sein. Und äh, so hat äh, eine ihre Mutter noch sie da ermutigt, zurückzugehen. Und das hat sie auch getan. Und da hat sie Jesus Christus als ihren persönlichen Heiland gefunden. Und äh, 
bis ans Ende treu gewesen. So ein klein wenig eine Zusammenfassung von, von dieses Zeugnis. Uh, Gerhard, you have been involved with uh, Katie quite a bit too and have uh, received encouragement. Would you come and share a little bit too, please? Ein Gruß von Peter Platt, Voice of Hope Mission, Winkler, Manitoba. <coughs> ich werde dies auf Englisch tun. Um, Katie, Annie und Lise kamen, waren in Russland, in um, die Ukraine, wie wir schon hörten. Und uh, sie kamen heraus im Zweiten Weltkrieg. They came out of the Ukraine in the Second World War. The last, the Russians were shelling cannoning the, the, the settlement, the place where the train was. And they, I think it was the last train out of there. And Katie couldn't walk. And her sisters and her mom were all by the train already stationed. And she asked the guy in a wheelbarrow if he could, there was something wrong with her legs, if, she, if he could carry, push her in the wheelbarrow. And he did. She joined her family and came to They came to Germany, to Holland, to Canada, and um, to Yarrow. A year or two, they paid off. Their uncle in Yarrow paid their ship passage. A year or two later, they, paid, they pay, had it paid off. <clears throat> they were going to teach Sunday school. And the church in Yarrow asked them, do you have Bible school? No, we don't. We, they said, we want people with Bible school. So they said, well, what do we do now? <clears throat> um, it seems like every door was closed. So they took, their heart was in Russia. They took a little white dog, a toy dog, and they cut it open. And they put a Russian Bible in there, put packaging around it, and sewed it carefully shut, sent it to their relatives in Russia. <clears throat> uh, three months went by. And uh, they said, they got a letter, thank you for that cute little white dog. And they, they wrote back, I'm going to say up low German, dem dort hoinst you mat The dog, you got to operate on that dog, operate on him. They cut the dog open and found the Russian Bible. And that started a ministry that was incredible, just amazing. Pastor Shartner already said about the tin can Bibles. They canned Bibles. I asked, Katie, I asked Annie, how many Bibles did you send to Russia? Lots. And it started a ministry, a Voice of Hope mission. Then... Uh, They, um, Katie and Annie moved to Vancouver, bought a house there. Katie was an uh, um, elevator operator at VG, Vancouver General Hospital. And she said to Annie, I'll pay the bills, you go study. Annie was sickly, not well. She studied accountants. She, got very she was very intelligent. And um, then she started the Friedenstimme, the Voice of Hope mission. Um, That's when I came into the picture. I, I was supported by King Road um, at Union Gospel Mission, and seven months later, my health burnt out. And I thought, what do I do now? I, I think my mom was getting tired of me back home. I don't know. She said, go mal, uh, Annie Pankratz visit you. Go visit Annie Pankratz. I said, what should I do there? Well, just go. I don't know if mom was trying to get rid of me, or, or was it God leading me to my next mission work? And uh, uh, she read me stories about the people in Russia. They said, we have no bread, but send us the bread of life, the Bible. I thought, these people have character. What would we Canadians do? We would beg. These people didn't beg. And I said, something has to be done here. And then um, we were waiting and praying for Russian Bibles that were jammed up somewhere. And we got up off our knees from praying. And I said to Annie, Katie was always there too. Uh, I said, why are we praying for Bibles that don't come, Russian Bibles? Why don't we print them ourselves? She said, Gerhard, what do you mean by that? I said, well, let's start praying for a printing press. And I fasted and prayed for nine days. And God gave us a $5,000 wonderful printing press. Five men, mostly King Road, paid for them. And I didn't have a penny to pay. And this, that started the print work for Frieden, Friedenstimme. We printed into the two million mark of Russian tracts, Gospels of John, Gospels of Matthew. 
and uh, Cloden Church was stapling gospels in Annie's basement, their house. We had the whole basement full of people stapling and collating, laying together gospels of John. And Annie, it was a virgin effort. It was, it was brand new. None of us knew what we were doing. We are pioneering. And uh, uh, she sent, Annie was sending, uh, we'd be printing here with Zeke Bear Croker and with Philip, my cousin, on three printing presses. And uh, so she would send with a container. She sent half, half our stuff, with a, half with Catholics, a ca Catholic container to Russia, and we never heard of it again. Annie comes, comes to me and says, Gerhard, I don't even want to tell you this. Annie, what's wrong? We lost the whole shipment. I said, don't worry about it, Annie. In war, one bullet hits the enemy, but many are shot. Let's keep printing. So we kept printing. Um, I just want to say something about Annie, Katie's sister. Katie paid the bills. Annie ran the mission. Annie supported 70 missionaries, 7-0 at one time in Russia. $450 a month. And I did the math yesterday, last night. That's $31,500 went through Pankrat's hands every month to support those missionaries. And they were just common people. Anything they did, you, anyone could do. On her retirement, Katie got cancer. She thought, what a letdown. <clears throat> and now I wanted to enjoy life. And she was an uh, elevator operator at Vancouver General Hospital. And she saw the people coming in for chemotherapy and radiation treatment. They said, do you want radiation or chemo? She said, neither. I'm not taking neither. How come? She said, I watched these people come in and they slow down, slow down, all of a sudden they died. She said, I'm not taking radiation or chemo. And she went with a Seventh-day Adventist doctor. He said, you have to become my patient for a naturopathic doc doctor. You have to become my patient to, for me to help you. So she said, Gerhard, I will live. She said, I wanted to live. And so she became his patient. And she, God healed her, made her completely well. 31 years we've been doing street work, me and others in Vancouver. And the work gets very difficult sometimes, very hard. And Katie always prayed me through. She prayed. <laughs> she prayed so hard. When, when I asked her to pray, she said, Gerhard, I will pray. And results happened. And she was my big encouragement. Look, I'm going to miss her. Thank you, Gerhard. Uh, Gerhard hat ein klein wenig erzählt von seiner Erfahrung mit den uh, Pankratz-Schwestern, ganz besonders auch mit Katie und uh, die Arbeit, die sie getan haben, indem sie Traktate gedruckt haben. Viele, viele Traktate, die dann verschickt wurden, besonders nach uh, den Ländern, wo der, das Evangelium nicht frei verkündigt wurde. Yeah, thank you, thank you, Gerhard. Is there anyone else that would like to share? Just open up... Uh, for a moment of sharing, if anybody has something. Yeah, please. Okay. <clears throat> Thank you. 
Thank you. I see no more hands. I just would like to invite you to listen to a short meditation. And um, as I was uh, thinking about uh, Katie, and it's almost like impossible to detach Katie you know, from the other sisters, right? Um, I was uh, thinking about a, a passage uh, that we find in Acts chapter 18. Um, and I would like to read a few verses out of it. Um, first of all, uh, 1 to 4. It says, After this, Paul left Athens and went to Corinth. And there he met a Jew named Aquila, a native of Pontus, who had recently come from Italy with his wife Priscilla, because Claudius had ordered all the Jews to leave Rome. And Paul went to see them. And because he was a tent maker, as they were, he stayed and worked with them. And every Sabbath he reasoned, uh, reasoned in the synagogue, trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. Now maybe you're asking, you know, why this passage? Now this passage has given us to the Christian community like uh, one word that has been uh, coined in a way of uh, describing some type of people. And those are the tent makers, yeah? Many of you are familiar with this word, tent makers. What is a tent maker? A uh, tent maker is uh, a person that uses like uh, their own natural gifts and uh, their profession to be a witness for Jesus to other people. And this is exactly where it comes from. As uh, Paul was a tent maker, he joined uh, Aquila and Priscilla in that profession that was like uh, their bread and butter that they got everyday life. And, but at the end we read, and he says, every Sabbath they reasoned in the synagogue trying to persuade Jews and Greeks. And uh, I think we can relate us so easily to, um, to the Pancrates ladies. So they used their gifts, their means that they had to bring the gospel to others. And they had like a special heart in, for the people where they had fled from. And uh, they felt this is our call. We need to bring the gospel to, to them as well. And I think uh, Katie and her sisters, they understood and accepted this, this concept for once, being a tent maker, but also the call from God to do this mission. The second aspect uh, of this story we find in, the, in verse 18 and 19, where it says, Paul stayed in Corinth for some time, and then he left the brothers and sisters and sailed for Syria, accompanied by Priscilla and Aquila. Before he sailed, he had his hair cut off at uh, St. Cree because of a uh, wow that he had taken. So they arrived at Ephesus, where Paul left Priscilla and Aquila, and he himself went into the synagogue and reasoned with the Jews. I think the second aspect that comes through uh, here is like being mission-minded. And if you know Paul's story, we will see this, being mission-minded. And I think uh, Aquila and Priscilla were the two ones that joined him in this endeavor at that point. And I think this was the, the second concept, I think, that was clear for, for Katie, to be mission-minded so she understood and she applied it she had this missionary mind so they did their social work for those in need uh, and especially sending scripture the word of god to those that could not have it and then the third aspect uh, is being active in the work uh, meanwhile, a Jew named Apollos, a native of Alexandria, came to Ephesus, and he was a learned man with a thorough knowledge of the Scriptures. He had been instructed in the way of the Lord, and he spoke with great fervor and taught about Jesus accurately, though he knew only the baptism of John, it says. And he began to speak boldly in the synagogue. When Priscilla and Aquila heard him, they invited him to their home and explained to him the way of God more adequately. So it's interesting that uh, there is another piece, and this is that they actively engage in the work. 
and we have seen it, you know, like through Garrett's uh, experience and many others that have been part of almost like where they had this opportunity to teach specific things to specific people. So three things to remember, remember about Katie. She was a tent maker. She was missionary minded and she was actively working and fulfilling the call that uh, God had given her. Let me just uh, summarize this in German. Zu der Predigt äh, habe ich einen Text gewählt aus Apostelgeschichte Kapitel 18. Es ist die Geschichte von Paulus und Aquila und Priscilla. Und äh, in diesem wird ganz klar herausgeschält ein, äh, ein Wort, das wir sehr oft brauchen in den christlichen Kreisen. Und das ist ein Zeltmacher. Paulus, der war von Beruf aus ein Zeltmacher und zusammen mit Aquila und Priscilla haben sie dann ihre Arbeit gebraucht, um die Mission zu tun. Und ich denke, dass Katie und auch ihre Schwestern diesen Begriff von Zeltmacher hatten und sie haben diese Arbeitsweise ausgeführt, indem sie dann das Evangelium verbreitet hatte. So, Katie hat diesen Sinn verstanden, sie hat ihr Ruf angenommen und sie hat dann das Evangelium dadurch gepredigt. Und der zweite Aspekt ist, dass sie missionarisch gesinnt war, so wie auch Paulus und Priscilla und Aquila. Sie haben ihren Dienst getan, ihren missionarischen Dienst getan. Sie haben nicht nur es verstanden, aber sie haben es auch getan. Und das bringt uns zu dem dritten Teil, dass wir herausschälen worden von ihr Leben. Und das ist, dass sie tätig in der Arbeit war. Sie haben das angewandt, was sie wussten und was Gott ihnen gegeben hat. Und ich denke, es ist merkwürdig zu verstehen und zu sehen, dass man so vielleicht wie diese Frau in dem Alten Testament mit Elias Sie hatte nur ganz wenig, aber Gott hat das vervielfältigt. Ja? Und äh, so war das auch in den Händen von Katie, Lise und von Anna. Das, was Gott sie anvertraut hatte, das hat äh, Gott in ihren Händen vervielfältigt. Und äh, wir möchten Gott danken, dass äh, sie diesen Dienst getan haben. Und ich denke, aus äh, all diesem, was sie erlebt haben, kommt das Thema von dem letzten Lied, das wir zusammen singen wollen, dass diese, dieses Vertrauen auf Gott und Gottes Zusage zu ihnen und diese Garantie, dass Gott gibt, bis ans Ende mit ihnen zu sein, das wird in diesem Lied auch gesungen. We like to sing like the last song. It's also a and well-known song, Blessed Assurance. And I think uh, Katie understood that she had this assurance in the Lord. So let's sing it together.
the question for us today is, what is our story, right? We heard the story that uh, God gave Katie, and uh, we see it was a, faith, a story of faithfulness from both sides, and uh, we can celebrate that. Just a few announcements now. So as we conclude the funeral service here, we will lead out, the, I will lead out the casket, and then you can just join behind me. So the casket will be placed on the hearse, and everybody is invited to join us at the um, Mennonite, uh, uh, McClure Road Mennonite Cemetery uh, for the graveside service. I would just like to um, give a few instructions for that. So if you join the procession, uh, please line up behind the hearse on our parking lot, and then we will be leaving out uh, the Clearbrook Gate, and then we just follow uh, like the hearse. So we need to respect all the traffic uh, uh, lights and everything, so please be mindful of that. But if you can have like the four-way flasher on, that helps for people to understand that we are in the procession. Um, so uh, in, we'd just like to thank everyone that was part of the service today and those that helped out. Um, uh, I think it was very much appreciated by everyone. I would like to invite you to stand now for the final prayer and benediction. Father, we thank you once more for the life of Katie Pankratz, and we thank you that uh, the good memories of her are an inspiration for us to continue to honor you with our lives. And now, as we go to say the last goodbye, please continue to be with us. We ask for your comfort, Father, and we ask that we also would learn to be ready to meet you whenever you call us, as you did, Katie. Father, we thank you that uh, she could be a blessing to many. And we know that she only could do that because she was touched by the Savior's grace of Jesus himself. And now, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Amen. You may be seated.